and discuss concerns in an objective and non-judgmental environment. This will enable us to grow as a community. Based on some of the conversations that have taken place already, we recognize the need for more specific training on how body language and posture, yes. as well as facial expressions, yes. can very well set the tone for an interaction with the police. Yes, yes, yes. Racial profiling. All day. I will personally be providing training going forward. These are just some of the things that we can learn from each other through dialogue and open and honest conversations. We will also continue to plan events for our community to come together with officers. We already have some in place, but are exploring additional opportunities such as tabletop exercises with leaders and informal community gatherings to answer questions, address any concerns, and to continue to build the trust between the black community and the police department. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. In addition to all of this, we recognize that state and local elections are essential for enacting change. I will be researching partners such as TurboVote and Rock the Vote to set up voter registration drives yes. so that greater number of our yes. may register and decide their right to vote. changes to the laws or policies that may be inherently unjust or discriminatory. A wise woman once told me, if you're given the power to execute change and you don't use that power, did you really deserve it in the first place? Yes, sir. Yes. I am committed to honoring the promises and statements I have made here today, but I do have one request of all of you. Please do not allow the actions of a bad police officer dictate your entire view on all police officers, and in return as police officers, we will never allow the actions of any one person change or dictate how we treat any member of our community. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's time. Mind that these police officers that you see around here today, their mothers, their fathers, their sons and daughters, neighbors and friends, they just may too. be the person who saved Don't the life of you or your loved ones, even at the cost of their own. We want to return home safely at the end of the day, just as all of you do. So, do me this favor. If you see an officer, smile and say hello. You may be surprised at the result. They should be doing that to us. They should be doing that to us. Protecting, sir. Let's all be part of the change. Bullshit, man. Fuck out Thank you for inviting me to speak today. Next. Before I conclude, I would like to reiterate to all of you that we stand united against police brutality and with the black members of our community and any member of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Let me ask you a question. I ain't getting no we got to be out here for change. Let me ask you something, and I want him to see this. How many of you have already gotten to the point where you don't even bother to file a complaint against a police officer because you don't think it's going to go Nothing's going to be done. That's a fucking thing. Nothing's going to be done. Children, 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 children. This is for you to see. Children. There are some there are some people that have complaints but have never filed a complaint because they never believe that the complaints are going to be followed up on. You are like, there's a reason why we eat in town. There's a reason to why here. Thank you. There's a reason why we have not only these officers. If you look over to the to that side over there, you'll see more officers lined up. One of the things that we want to do is we want to have an actual dialogue with the chief right here. Yeah. If you've had an issue with an officer in this town, the chief is right here. Thank you. And he's here on purpose. I know how we go.
this guy over here was actually willing to hear, would you be willing to talk? That's all we ever yes. want, right? Yes. That's all we ever want. Yes. And so that's why we're here. We're here because the only way change is ever going to happen is if some people are willing to talk, and while I'm talking, you're you willing listen. to listen. We have some complaints. We got some issues. Some of us have been mistreated. Some have been mistreated in this very town that I hear that. Yes. Yes. Yep. In this very town. Yep. And so the chief of police is here, and he said, come talk to me. The captain, where's captain at? Captain, where's your hand, Cap? You're not hiding today. <laughs> Find these individuals in position of authority. Tell them your stories. Don't be silent anymore. The time of being silent is over. over. The time of not being heard is over. The time of feeling like nothing is going to be done about it is over. Which one's the bad cop? Which one's the bad one? No bad ones? I don't think so. I think they're all good cops. Any of you ever lied on a report? Yeah. No, that's a crime. It's a great way to lose your job. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to do the question. What's your name and badge number, sir? Well, my name is Matthew Williams, so as you can see here, okay. my badge number is 51. Oh, and you're brass, too. You're a sergeant. Look at you. Close to retirement? Past retirement. Oh, yeah. what are you going to do, 30? Probably. And then what, a class three after that? Nah, nah, nah. Come back and work in another I'm town? I'm an old cop, man. I've been here a long time. <laughs> You're back from the Dale Bennett era and all that, huh? I, I, Dale was one of my sergeants way, way back in yeah, the day. Yeah, he had a bad reputation. It was a lot different when I started. Man. Yeah, That's I... That's why I enjoy this today. It was a lot different. Yeah, I knew a few officers back then. I, I, I didn't speak highly of them, but I, I... You know, now I don't see anything bad. But then again, I'm not young anymore, so... You tend to behave yourself when you get older. and That's true. So. What's your name, sir? Kevin Licknack. 110 is my dad. And how long have you been an officer? Uh, here for eight years. Eight years? Oh, All right. Well, things will get better. <laughs> Every day. Okay. You'll be a corporal someday. What do we have here? Uh, officer Michael Sullivan, badge number 109. All right. How long have you been on the job? Uh, about 11 years now. 11 years. Yep. You're going to retire here, I bet, right? <laughs> oh, I know this guy right here. What's up? I know this guy really well. This guy, you know, he's everything I'm not. He was handsome. <laughs> the girls oh, loved this come guy. On, on. He'd go up to the busiest window. They would stop everything they're doing to wait on him. And I'll never forget we came here to the health department. That girl jumped out of the seat to come wait on him. I know he's Matt lying. Matt and I worked I at John Day. He's lying. He's lying. <laughs> we worked at John Day Funeral Home, and he took okay. me out on our first removal. I almost passed out on that. Deal. I don't know if you remember that. But, uh, yeah, Matt taught, taught me everything there. And, and ten Good times. Many years later, I'm still in the business. And, uh, Are you still up? Yes, yeah, don't say the name. It's for yeah, live, yeah, Stephen. Yeah. I don't want nuts to call me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Now, you've been on, what, 10 years on this now? 14 years. 14, holy shit. It flies by. 
Yeah, it does, because I remember you were going to the academy, and you were coming to work tired. We're, we're, working during the day at the funeral home. Yeah. yeah. And one of his big things that he wanted to do was hold every organ in his hand. I'll never forget this. Everyone? He came to me one day, and he says, <laughs> what was it, the you? heart or something? He came, he came yeah. and goes, I finally held every organ. I don't know what it was, a heart or something. <laughs> that was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got you, news for you. You would have weird goals like that. I, you yeah. know what, I've seen autopsy and things, but I, the only organ I've seen for so far was a brain. I haven't seen any in terms. Right? What's that? It was pretty cool. Was that well, I, or somewhere else? No, I actually, I went to, I had to take a, a guy d donated his brain to, so I went down to Pennsylvania Hospital and uh, I sat in there while they sawed his head open and pulled it out and I thought that was pretty bizarre, but. Yeah, it is. And then they, uh, you know. Yeah, those behind the scenes stuff is pretty nasty. You know, in the funeral business, we see a lot of unpleasantries. You know, so I relate to a lot of what officers go through because you see it while it's going down. I get it after it's all done, and uh, you know, it's always terrible when we see kids and things like that. But uh, Matt's a good guy. I can test this because I know him before he was a cop. And married? You still married? You still married? Yeah. You had two kids or one? Two kids, yeah. You're living, more than two. And you're living in Eatontown? No, I moved. Okay. I moved, uh, yeah, I was, I was here for like 10 years. Yeah. So when you split, you got to keep the house? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, good for you. <laughs> for a sum anyway, of money, for a sum of money. Let me get my uh, picture in here with Matt. Because Matt is a good guy. Let me turn this around. This is Matt Bailey. I've known him for many years. Before he was an officer. Look at him. He looks like a million bucks next to my face. Look at this guy. Oh my God. All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Guys, getting overtime? Uh, getting overtime? Uh, get out of here! What do you got? You getting comp time? What are you getting? You getting something? You getting? You getting overtime? Yeah. Man, what the hell? It's easy. How many more people back there? Uh, there's, I don't know. I want to say maybe 50, 60 people back there. They're all bullshitting with the cops and stuff. Oh, okay. So, yeah. It's a nice rally. I, you know, it's my seventh one. It's, it's been oh, yeah, a nice I went rally. To the one yesterday at Red Bank. Oh, you were in Red Bank? That was a nice one too. Uh, yeah. That was a long one too. Tell me about it. That was a long. I was live streaming. Hold the camera for two hours. There. Oh, you did? Yeah, you actually see. If you go to New Jersey. You had the drone? No, no. I got a camera and my phone. So I live stream. If you go to New Jersey Exposed, that's spelled out long way. Yeah, you'll see the live stream, whatever uh, camcorder video I'll have also. Oh, okay. You have to, so you probably see your smiling face. Yeah, Who am I speaking with? No, I've been, I've been getting this thing. You're not, you're not giving me your name? Huh? No, what's your name? Who am Chuck. I? Chuck. Chuck? Yeah. Who's this character over here? Ah. Man, this, this guy scares me. Is he all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Have a good day. Take care. All right. Well, guys, there you have it. Another protest, Eatontown. This, you know, every, I know it's starting to get different everywhere I go. This one's a little more organized, and people were entertained rather than like Asbury, where they're all kind of standing around and yelling and stuff. So I want to say this was a good one. The chief of police, Chief Lucia, came out. He was a man. He came out and he took it. He definitely took it. There's some people out there yelling at him. And uh, I I'll, give him, I'll give him credit. He took it like a man out there. Okay. I'm John Van Dyke for New Jersey Expose. Chief, I have.
have one question. Yes, sir. How much money does your town pay out in lawsuit settlements? Uh, geez, I don't know off the top of my head, but we don't we don't have a whole lot of lawsuits at all. We don't have a whole lot of lawsuits at all. Okay. But I don't know. I mean, I you know I don't tally up. I've been chief for two and a half years. I don't think we paid out anything since since I've been chief. I could probably tell you that. Okay. Chief, right. I will fact check that. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. And if I'm wrong, I'll tell you I'm wrong. All right. Uh, I'm John Van Dyke. We're New Jersey hey, John, no New nice Jersey Exposed YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah, thank you. I grow, I've grown up in this area. I know one of your officers, Matt Bill. Yeah, you know Matt. They work with him at the funeral. So my name is Bill. I always get any time you ever had any okay, questions. Okay. Thank you. Let's talk about Eatontown and one of their bad cops. Here's the story that came up. This is uh, dated March 30th, 2019, originally posted November 30th, 2012. And here's the story right here. Let's find out what this fine, upstanding, well-trained professional out risking our lives protecting and serving the community has done. Or did. Phil Emanuel, I don't know him, the former Eatontown detective accused of raping an informant, sat hunched over and sobbing in a chair in a Monmouth court, County courtroom on Friday morning. Emanuel, 33, a married father from Brick, was being sentenced by Judge Thomas F. Scully under a plea agreement he accepted in October by admitting to criminal coercion and tampering with evidence. Now, let me go back and just remind you what they just said here. Deta uh, Emmanuel, Philip Emanuel, the former Eatontown detective, accused of raping an informant. He was accused of raping. The woman c concurred with it. So anyway, let me go on with the story. Behind him were more tears. One on one side of the room were his friends and family, according to his wife, blah, blah, blah. On the other side of the room was Emmanuel's victim, a 24-year-old woman who struggled to speak through tears of her own as she explained to the court, in graphic detail, her claim of how Emmanuel used the threat of prison for a theft charge she had pending to take advantage of her. This accumulated with an incident inside a van in a church in church parking lot where she alleged Emmanuel raped her after she refused to perform oral sex on him. Well, isn't that nice? The victim said she later reported the incident, turned over her semen-stained jeans to police, and cooperated on a call to Emmanuel, which was listened in on by investigators, where she repeatedly said, retold her, I thought you wanted it. The woman said she initially agreed to the plea agreement, which would prevent Emmanuel from serving jail time because she would be assured he would never be in a position to take advantage of another person again, and that forgiving was part of her recovery process. But she ch said she changed her mind after she read a quote from Manuel's attorney, Patrick to Toscano, in the media in which she said this, this con Toscano called the incident a 10-minute lapse of judgment implied that he was not convinced that Emmanuel was not the victim in the case. I felt betrayed and victimized all over again, said the victim, adding she was she has suffered from several emotional and psychological issues since the incident. I now feel the only way to properly deal with this man is for him to go to prison, she said. I'm here to say that Emmanuel is a sex offender who singles out unfortunate and vulnerable women with no remorse and must be labeled as such. Okay, so let's go find out what this lovely Blue Zero hero from Eatontown got. Now remember, people, you know that there's two sets of rules here when you go to court. If you're a Blue Zero hero, you get treated one way. They will give you a way out. If you're anybody else, you get the book thrown at you. 
So the judge is quoted saying, you are not going to jail as we traditionally know the concept of jail today, but with many respects, given what your childhood dream was, you're going to be in jail the rest of your life, Scully said. You're going to have to live with this the rest of your life. Scully then sends Emmanuel to five years of probation for third degree criminal coercion charge and three years of probation for the fourth degree tampering with evidence charge, which will run concurrently. That means... He's going to do five years, not eight. Emmanuel will also have to submit to DNA sample, fingerprinting, and will be banned from ever serving as a police officer or any other government employee. Now, I personally think Mr. Emmanuel should have gone to jail. At least a year. I think his wife should divorce his ass. But we know that's not going to happen. She's a true blue badge bunny, and she's stuck by his side. This guy raped a woman. He broke her trust. The woman, he took advantage of this unfortunate woman, and there he is. So that's one of the Blue Zero Hero stories from Eatontown Police.